Good morning. All right, so we're going to do a short Bible passage. Well, actually, it's probably a, one of the longer ones that I'll be reading. And then we'll have a little discussion. This is the story um, where Jesus forgives the adulterous woman. Uh, and we'll just skip to verse 3. It says, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. Uh, so just for reference sake, adultery is a crime punishable by death. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question to tra as a trap in order to have a basis of accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who had heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, why are you? where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. So, in the world today, this is where this passage ends. Jesus is confronted with uh, a woman who is clearly caught in adultery. Uh, adultery is punishable by death. It is a, in their customs and cultures, a, a horrible law-breaking offense. Uh, and she's clearly caught in it. And, but Jesus goes through, through this situation. He bends down. He's writing on the ground, um, and then he stands up, and then he writes on the ground again a little bit. Um, I've heard a lot of pastors go into what they thought Jesus was doing on the ground when he was writing, uh, and they come up with all these different ideas, and that's missing the point. <laughs> he's so missing the point. The point is, is he's he's it's just right there in in this in the scripture. He says, if any one of you is without sin, let him be first to throw a stone at her. He's pointing out, they're all hypocrites. Everyone sins. Everyone is guilty of a sin. And uh, in our culture today, no one wants to be accused of sin. They want acceptance for everything that they do. And they think that Jesus is going to forgive their sin, even if they're within the sin. Because that's where, in, in their minds, this story stops. It's right here. He says, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir, she said. And then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. But the final part, the last part says, go now and leave your life of sin. We're not, we're, God didn't forgive us. God didn't send his son to die on a cross, um, shed his blood for the forgiveness of sins for us to stay in our sin. Jesus says it right here. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. He doesn't want us to stay in sin. He wants us to repent, which just means turn away from your sin and stop sinning. He wants us to be obedient to him. And today in our culture, being obedient doesn't jive well, doesn't make sense. But as, as a father of some boys, I, I've learned that I just want my boys to be obedient. And it's like, I will, I tell my one son, I say to him all the time, I don't want to say all the time, but I tell him, I said, daddy just wants to bless you, but you keep getting in trouble. And I think God, the father is the same way. God just wants to bless us. He wants to love on us. He wants to, he wants to provide us the things that we need in this life. And he wants his message to get out. But 
if the whole time we're rebelling against him, we're not being obedient, I don't believe God's going to bless us. And that would be like my son back talking me and then me giving him a $20 bill. Here you go. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't think that's the way God works. I think sometimes in life we get we get a lot of blessings and God is patient with us and he doesn't want anyone to perish. The Bible tells us that. But eventually God wants us as children of God to be obedient, to follow his will, to repent of our sins, turn from our sins and, and look to him. Now, if you're not a Christian and uh, this doesn't make any sense to you, the Bible's you know, God's not your God, and this isn't your way, then that that's that's you. <laughs> but if you claim to be a Christian, and you claim that you can continue sinning and, and stay in that life of sin, and God's going to be blessing you, and God you know, loves and adores you, and, and is going to be there for you every single time, blah, blah, blah. No, no. Children of Israel are are a, a pretty good evidence of that. Um, God wanted to bless them. They rebelled. What happened? They got attacked by another king, pulled into slavery. Um, Israel was destroyed, I believe it was 12 or 13 times, and rebuilt uh, because of their disobedience to God. Uh, and I think if they were just obedient, um, things would have been a lot different. And I think that's the way it is in our lives. I think... If we would just choose to be obedient to God, we choose to leave our lives of sin. And I, I get it. We all make mistakes. We, we're all guilty. I'm guilty. But God calls us to leave our sin behind. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and God bless you.